What's up guys? Got another one of those huge workout videos for you. I mean the type of videos where I need to do absolute ton of work. Wait a minute. Aren't all my videos like that? No idea. So the time has finally arrived. I need to get this pile to do that thing there. But uh, not only that pile, some additional things as well. These, these bologna sandwiches. Yeah, I don't really want them to sit here too long. Once they start to crack up, then the lumber will be pretty much worthless. So I'm pretty sure some of you remember that video when I got this here. And that was quite the ordeal. So these are still kind of meant for one purpose. I haven't changed my plans so far, which is pretty uncommon, but um, these are still meant for the big workshop build. So if you don't know what's what, I'm planning to kind of push this building into the stratosphere and then build a big workshop here. It has to be big enough so it could fit this thing in there. I haven't really done much with this thing ever since I got it. I think I like used it once to push some snow. But other than that, the thing has been just sitting here. Don't know why I even got this thing. But I don't regret it at all, guys. I'm sure I will need it for something, you know, for something. So I want the big workshop to be big enough for that thing. And I'm planning to make it slightly even bigger, considering that I might even get something bigger one day. So wanna be prepared for that. But uh, I'm not really sure when the build will start. Definitely not this year. Best case scenario, next year, summertime, somewhere. Most likely though, in about two years. Guess we'll see how it goes. But uh, this video is not about building a huge workshop. This video is about doing some sawmilling. So I'm planning to cut those uh, bigger logs first and then focus on this pile. I'm guessing it's gonna take about two to three weeks to go through this. Guess we'll see how right I am. Let's just kind of get to work. Time is not on my side right now. So let's set up my setup. For those who don't know, I use a pressure washer to wash each log before cutting. So I can get a lot more cuts out of a single blade. But I don't have any water here right now, so I need to get hose. Bunch of hose. I need a lot of hose. I think there's something wrong here. Well, the valve is clearly open. I think the problem is here. Most likely the thing is just broken. Man, this thing is really deep. Just imagine how hard it would be to dig something like this straight down into the abyss. I'm guessing it's about uh, 15 meters deep. But anyway, let's deep dive in there because I need to turn off the water. Sketchy. Mean. You know, one day I have to go down there and clean the bottom. I'm not really looking forward for that day. Okay, anyway. Yeah, something has happened in there, because that valve is not moving at all, although it's moving up here. You should have something here, something that would remotely fit there. Just 
story of my life guys. Absolute ton of stuff, but not the things I need. Mild damage there. Think I can adjust this to be a bit deeper. Eureka! Cut it to work. Where what there? I forgot that welding. And then I forgot to switch this off. I always forget things. I feel like I have Alzheimer's 2.0. Great, at least we got that working. It's still leaking though, so I do need to change it out. But uh, knowing me, I will probably forget it. You know, I've been at it trying to set up the water for like two hours now. It's just so many problems. First of all, the hose was not big enough. I had to put it like in three different parts. Second off, the valve broke again. At least two times. And finally, when I got water here, I get no water through this thing. I'm having nothing but bad luck today. Seems fine. I think there's something wrong with this pressure nozzle. My theory is that there were a couple of squirrels, they made a nest in there, but right now they have entered orbit around the sun. Okay, I got the water system set up now, took forever, but it's fine.
three more things that I need to do and hopefully these will go a bit faster. So, so all the shorter lumber pieces I'm planning to put here. I need to tidy this place up a bit. Here we go. Now before you jump me, I do have eyes, you know. I can clearly see that this is just pure manure right now. But I comfort myself knowing that it's temporary. Next year I will have a permanent spot for sawmill material. The thing is though, I've been saying that to myself for the past three years. Okay, we need a spot for those big logs, beefy logs. For that I need some type of permanent spot because I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna use them for most likely a couple of years. Some spot where they will not annoy anyone. I also gonna need to cover them up nicely though, so that the sun does not destroy them. But um, I'm thinking here guys, it's a nice uh, shady spot once the leaves start coming in and plenty of length should do fine one more thing to sort out then we can get to work I need to do a maintenance run on this uh, miser, miser whatever that means if you haven't realized this yet I'm not really good with names greasy greasy bunch of greasy I got a healthy tip for you regarding these pillar block bearings. When you're adding grease to them, try to not add too much. What I mean is, um, if you see grease coming out from the side, that means it's already too late. The seal has failed due to the excessive pressure of grease inside the bearing. Thus, that will create the opportunity for dirt to get inside, which eventually will lead to bearing failure. So this was told to me by a 76 year old mechanic. Maybe he's right. About the car battery, there was an idea, but uh, that idea did not go anywhere. That's all you need to know. Huh. That's a nice amount of mold in there. Should probably flush it out. Oh, I can smell that. That is so nasty. Crazy how long these last. Ever, ever, ever since I built the thing and they're still going. Like new. If you're thinking about uh, building a pansa mill and constructing the guy pairings yourself, I would not recommend to do so. Just to uh, get one of these. I mean, this was only like 30 bucks. And uh, they pretty much just last forever. Slightly better. Bro, I think it's leaking more than uh, what's coming out of that uh, nozzle. Everything is just 
crap manufacturing. Nothing is intended to last. Got to rebuy everything yearly. And it's just gonna get much worse. By the way, if you're curious, I use uh, water and some uh, windscreen wiper fluid. It makes the mix uh, soapy and uh, soapy is something. People also have used diesel, but uh, does it look like I made out of money? This is cheaper than diesel. You know, considering it's a sawmill, the filter is pretty clean. Cleaner than clean is still better. I should probably do an oil change as well. Can't quite remember the last time I changed oil on this thing. No, I'm trying, but uh, there's like a firewall in the way. If you can't remember the last time you did oil change, then do an oil change. It should be written in some book somewhere. Well, you know what they say, at least the frame will not rust away. I do need to regularly add oil down to that raceway so that the engine goes right nicely back and forth. It's like a win-win situation right now. About the engine oil, guys, I should probably keep some sort of track of it. I know that Andrew always writes down the date on the filter, but um, this thing doesn't have a filter. So I should probably write it down somewhere else. Bro, what does that look like? That was completely unintended. Did not plan that. This is so weird. This is so weird. think that's it guys we're ready to go let's go see if i can pick up one of those dogs and somehow get it here
Well, that could have gone better. Pretty much rammed into the shed like six times. Pushed the entire sawmill off its foundation. At least the thing is on here. Considering how much effort it took me to put this one here, I didn't think uh, I can really put the bigger ones. The biggest I have is about almost two times bigger than this one. You know what? I'm gonna deal with one problem at a time. Yeah, that seems like a plan. Don't have enough thinking power to think ahead. Birch guys, may I present you the banana tree? That's why I want to keep them timber pieces as thick as I can so that this wouldn't happen. And this is just hopeless. While I'm cutting them, they're twisting and turning. There's just so much internal pressure inside the logs. And while I'm cutting them, the log itself loses integrity and that internal pressure will start to show. So, this is not the greatest tree to make lumber pieces out of. I was hoping that um, if I make them thick enough, they would be able to keep their straightness. But uh, I mean, even this piece, complete banana. And while I was cutting it, it made these massive cracks. I think uh, one was here and another one is here. It's just hopeless. It's just... It's not really good lumber material if it's... If the measurements are going all over the place. <laughs> I mean, check this thing out. What? Okay guys, I need to think a bit. This will not work. It will sort of work, but uh, mean, considering the amount of labor to cut one log, not worth it. And this wasn't even the biggest log. Okay guys, new plan. So instead of making these things eight meters long, I'm gonna make them six meters long. Maybe then they will not twist as much. I can still make the workshop happen, even with six meter beams. But uh, I do have to change the designs a bit.
Man, this just keeps getting better and better. I think the hose broke. No, I don't think it's really my fault. This hose seems kind of rot. Not in the best shape. Mean. Is it just me or this fitting looks kind of weird? Well, I would say it's like bent, but it's it's definitely not bent. I think it's like some type of homemade fitting. Somebody has made this. Well, as long as it doesn't leak, then it's cool, I guess. Yeah, it's just in case I'm gonna get a new fitting as well. I'm pretty sure this hose was at the end of its lifespan. I mean, just look at that. Yeah, I think I just kind of notched it a little bit and then it developed a hole. But it was gonna go any moment anyway. Yeah, it doesn't look that great. Oh well. Let's go get a new hose. Be right back. Horses, guys. Bunch of horses. I did ask the hydro shop guy what could have caused the failure of that hose. He told me, rot. No question there. However, I did not mention that I tried to demolish a shed by grinding this hose against said shed. Nobody in their right mind would mention that. I'm pretty sure this was not the first one to go. There are a bunch of hoses just like that one that, uh, that are just completely rot. And eventually they will fail. If you ask me, I think it's the sun, you know. Equipment sitting just outside is not great. The sun will make the hoses eventually fail. It just takes a tiny little hole. And it's gone. At least the thing was not that expensive. This, this piece cost me about $20. like we're good now correct me if I'm wrong but in order to correctly check the hydraulic fluid all the hydraulic cylinders need to be inside I'm not 100% sure about that but I think that's the case This thing looks really weird in this configuration. So I'm thinking as the rams are all inside the tubes, then it should show the correct oil in the tank. Somewhere in the middle there. Great, we got another weird number. It's definitely not 30. Also not 28. So I'm guessing 29, which I don't have. Maybe chaps have their own standard. What?
Anyway, I'm gonna push uh, all the cylinders out, see if the level changes. If it goes lower, then my theory should be correct. Well, it definitely moved downwards, so I don't know. Anyway, guys, I don't think this is the right tool for the given task. I mean, in a, in a short amount of time, I managed to pull my entire band sawmill off its foundation, lifted the sawmill shed up at least four times, smashed a couple of the siding boards, and also broke one of the hoses. This is definitely not the right tool for that job. Gonna break out the white hobo. Yeah, for this log the twist was quite minimal. It only twisted so much from both ends. This way though the twist is a bit more aggressive. But yeah, I think I'm gonna go with this uh, length instead. And I'm gonna try to get them at least 8x8. Eight 8x8 eight. Uh, eight eight would be perfect. But 6x8 um, would also work. Uh, I mean, this one kind of starts off as a 6x8, but uh, kind of ends as a 6x6 at the end. So this one really went banana on me. No idea what I'm gonna do with this piece. This one is absolute banana as well. But I'm sure I will find some use for it. Worst case scenario, right into the wood fire stove.
Yeah, I want to make sure that ink does not roll into that bucket. That actually has happened more than one time. I'm not really fond of those memories. I think it's the biggest one I have out of that set. Because the log wants to naturally kind of roll this way right now, then I don't really need to add any lockers on this side. As the blade will be cutting, it will be pulling the log this way, further securing it against the clamps. Just a quick tip how to save some seconds. By the way, bandsaw mill guys, if you're thinking about buying one or building one, keep one thing in mind. Cutting the logs with the thing is the best part, also the easiest part, but handling the logs. I mean, if they are a bunch of pussy logs, like that bunch there, then it's not that big of a deal. But man handling this one, 90% of the time to cut this log up is just handling it, turning it, positioning it. The remaining 10%, maybe even 5, is just, is just going through it with the mill. That is the easiest part. So keep that in mind. Perhaps it's better to invest in a hydraulic pantsa mill. Although those tend to cost like 10 times more. So there's that to think about. This seems like a relatively clean log, doesn't it? But uh, let's check how much dirt there's on here. All that dirt will mess this thing up pretty fast. Now I only clean the inward side. I don't really bother with the outwards. As the blade travels inwards, it will pull that dirt along the wood. But I think it doesn't really matter if there's dirt on this side. is definitely the right tool for the job. I've been actually looking to buy a tracked skid steer. Apparently they don't exist in Estonia. Either nobody's selling or they just uh, don't exist down in this joint. Okay, I did find one, but it was this um, JCB. I'm not really sure what you call that machine. The pushing ram is only on one side and you can uh, exit the vehicle like exiting a car. That thing was like 47 grand, so that's not happening. But uh, if, if I can't find any dragged one, I'm gonna look for a bigger bobcat. I would like something that can lift about two tons. That would be that would be perfect for me. I would I would just love to love to have some Takuchi, you know, like uh, Diesel Creek has, but. Uh, non-existent in this country welcome to east europe guys all we got is soviet crap
this will probably be the hardest part. Need to somehow get it upright. Not gonna be easy that. Check this out guys. Plastic. There's only metal from here to here. The rest is just plastic. Viscars. Guys, I thought you were good. But even you make crap. The pile of junk. Honestly, I thought I'm just gonna break this pipe, but the thing did not even suffer any damage. Just uh, some stupid, pointless plastic part. starting to piss me off not not even funny anymore yeah i know i need to sell it but don't have a clear answer for that A couple of decent 6x10s, a bit more than I need perhaps, but um, you know, if I try to cut that 2x6 out of here, then uh, I'm pretty sure that 2x6 is going to be all banana mode. Addition to that, the remaining piece will most likely bend as well. So I think I'm just going to keep them 6x10s. Uh, and you know, The bigger they are, the less chance there is for them to go banana mode. Anyway guys, we have three more. Three. More. One, two, three. Fingers don't lie. I think actually this is the biggest lock, not the previous one. These two are definitely smaller. I'm thinking let's uh I'm thinking some pants mode. Be patient with me guys. Give me like two minutes. And maybe and maybe some seconds.
anybody want to buy some firewood? My current uh, idea is that I'm either going to set this pile on fire or I'm just going to put some C4 in there somewhere and then it's going to be somebody else's problem. And all, all I can currently dream about is just having a nice flat grass surface here. There are. your eyes upon this pile of dew. Now one day, I'm not sure when, this is gonna be a big workshop build. As of right now I think I should have everything here. Don't have any project or... but I do have some vision what I wanna... how I wanna make that shop but no project just yet and no permit or anything. Before I start any build I need to sort those out and then we'll take it from there but um, I'm not sure when I'm gonna start a build. There are some amounts of things that I want to do before I start this one so it's most likely gonna take some time. So I need to protect these pieces. I'm not really worried about the rain. Even if the top part gets wet, it will dry out pretty fast. And because they're nicely above ground, then they will not start rotting out from the bottom. So rain is not really a big problem unless, uh, unless they sit here for like 20 years, then it might be an issue. The main culprit that I'm gonna worried about is that douchebag up there. So the sun will destroy these planks pretty fast. If I don't put anything on here they will get wet and as the sun dries them up they will dry again. They might twist or bend or something. Now I could use some uh, pointless tarp or something like that which will fail in about too soon. I do have another option but uh, that option kind of sucks. The option is great but uh, getting the material kind of sucks. So, here, more specifically, down there, I got some spare roof panels. The problem though is quite obvious. On a normal day, I would uh, push all this crap through the wall in that direction, push everything on top of the panels in that direction and then try to lift the ballot up and take it out before the building kind of collapsed on me. Now that would be my normal day routine, but I remember that um, I put them there with the bobcat. So the bobcat kind of fit here nicely, but uh, not anymore. I mean, I can't even get back there. That would mean the building has sank some. Or something to do with those new tires I got on the machine. So, well, this is just gonna take some time. Some time for me, I mean.
I think this bunker should keep them safe for a while at least one thing's for sure them gats are gonna have a blast I'm not gonna add anything to the back the douchebag up there we will never reach this area this side is nicely covered with the forest should be fine anyway guys look at that nice openness just grass well messed up grass but still grass I think we achieved something here and I do believe I'm gonna wrap this up now now I'm gonna push forward pretty much just pick this up from here most likely gonna start with that pile there and then I still need to sort out the firewood uh. but for you guys bye bye Oh, by the way, before I wrap it up, there is something that is kind of bugging me. So I don't like if I break something, it kind of, it, it kind of nags on me. So I have to do something about it. Two options with that. Either go buy a new one or try to fix it up. Well, because I'm kind of broke. I'm always broke, by the way. Let's try to fix this one up. Looks kind of short. That should do. Whatever. So as I was cutting, the moment I reached this point, huge bang. Things just split like that. Quite deep in there. Not great at all. Just check that crack guys. That is insane. I'm thinking it's highly likely that the crack will just keep going. Tension in wood, mind blowing. It did crack a second time, sadly, I didn't really get it on tape. It's really scary bang, you know, it feels like, feels like one of the wheels just kind of broke off from the bandsaw mill. Like, boom. It kind of makes the lumber uh, unusable, to be honest. So sad.